Hi, this is Stephen here from Share Navigator, and today we're going to share with you the long call strategy. Here's an overview of what we're going to cover today. You can pause the video now if you want to take note of what we're going to cover, but we'll flow through this through the rest of the video. And we're going to do this with a real life example on Ford. So first things first, um, the long call strategy is a bullish strategy. You want the share price to rise in order to profit from this strategy. You're paying out, so it's a debit. You're paying for the, for the call option. And it's best placed when implied volatility is low in the options that you're buying. And our other piece of advice to you is to give yourself plenty of time for this trade to work out. We'll explain that in greater detail as we go along. So how is a long call constructed as a trade? Well, it's very simple, really. You're just going ahead. You're going to buy a call option at a strike price, which is in the money. Now, the reason we pick in the money, or we like to do it this way, is that you're buying less time premium and you're paying out less for volatility um, the further you go in the money. So in, in essence, you're buying more real value in, in terms of the underlying, which gives you a, a more chances, more opportunities for this to work out in the long term. So what we're going to do is go live to the markets. We're going to do an example on our dummy account with Microsoft. So here we are in our demo account with Interactive Brokers. Uh, one stock you'll all be familiar with is Microsoft. So you can see here Microsoft is trading at $47. And another way of benefiting from the shares of Microsoft rising would be to buy the call option. So we're going to have a look at the options for Microsoft. And you can see here we have option chains that are expiring at different dates, so the 22nd of May, the 29th of May. But we also have options that expire way out into January 2017. And that's given us almost a year and a half for this particular trade to work out or for the shares to rise. So we're going to pick this particular expiry. And you can see down in the middle here, you have the strike prices that we could pick. And on the left-hand side, we have the call options. Now, as we said, we like to go um, in the money. That's the particular way we like to place this. Other people may have different ways of doing it. So we're looking, let's say, maybe at the, you know, we might go as low as the $40 or the $38 call. So we'll pick the $40 calls, for example. So we're going to go and we're going to buy. So the way to do it is just to click on the asking price for the calls. And you can see what's going to happen now in the order management window down below is that the the order management window will automatically populate with buy one Microsoft January 2017 $40 call. And they have a limit price in here, $9.50. So we would always say to you to dictate the price to the market. Um, now, we would haggle with the market. You can see the bid ask spread here is $0.50. Cents. This is just a demo account. It would be a lot tighter in the real market. Um, we would normally say to you to haggle and to meet the market somewhere halfway. Um, but just because we're demonstrating here, we want to get filled, we'll, we'll go with the limit price here of 950. And the time in force is a day order. So we click on preview order. It's asking us, are you sure you want to place this trade? We are. We click on submit. So the order has gone into the options market in Chicago, and you see we've got filled already. So I'm going to go into our positions now and show you what this actually looks like. So you're going to see our positions updated here. You can see we have the Microsoft long call option we the current price is 950 we paid 951 including the trading commission so we're just down slightly on the particular trade so that's what how you would actually go and place a long call option we're going to go back now to the presentation and look at a real life example we did in our own account in ford so before we get to the presentation i just want to show you this example here that we have it's ford we own the January 2016, $10 calls. We own two contracts and we're up $267 of them there. So that's what you can see. We did this before. So we're going to talk you through this specific trade in greater detail throughout the presentation. So here we have Ford. At the time we placed this particular trade, it was trading at $14.20, and that was on the 7th of November 2014. So we're now in May 2015. So at the time, we believed the share price was going to rise, and we had a decision to make. We could go and buy the stock, or we could go and buy the call option. And we decided to go and buy the call option instead. So what we did was we bought two contracts of the 4 January 2016 $10 call option. The cost for the contract was $430 or $430 per contract. 
because we bought two, that's two times that. So our net cost for this was $860. So just a quick note here, please only trade options with high liquidity options. And the reason is it's very hard to make money in options that have wide bid ask spread. So we would ask you to use high liquid options. Okay, so the bottom line is how much are we risking in this particular trade? And the answer is it's just the amount that we've paid for the calls. And in Ford's case, it was $860. So that was our risk. And what's our max profit potential? Well, the answer is there is no max profit potential. The profit potential is unlimited. The further the shares rise, the more profit you make. It's as simple as that. And that's kind of demonstrated here by this hockey stick, if you like, in the long call uh, graph for Ford. As the share price rises above the break even, the profit increases. Currently with Ford, um, it's trading at fifteen fifty eight. Our profit is two hundred and fifty seven dollars, as we've just shown you in the in the in our account. So just calculating the return on investment. Well, the return on investment equals your profit or loss divided by your investment. So we know what our current profit is. We just showed you there in our account is two hundred and fifty seven dollars. We invested eight hundred and sixty dollars. We know that. So our current return on investment in just less than five months is thirty percent. So what is the break even in this particular trade or in a long call trade? Well, the break even is the strike price plus the premium that you've paid. So for our case in Ford, our strike price was 10. The premium we paid out was 430. So our break even is 1430. So if at expiry come January 2016, the shares of Ford stay above 1430, we're going to be making some sort of a profit. So what is the effect of volatility on the long call strategy? Well, it's best to play um, long calls when employed volatility is low. And the reason is when employed volatility is high, option premiums are more expensive. Thereafter, the effects of volatility really depend on whether your call is in the money or out of the money. So usually employed volatility will add to option premiums. But if the share price has fallen a lot, it doesn't really matter. You're going to be more than likely losing on your call option position. So really, it's the net effect of volatility is at the point of purchase. You don't want to buy call options that have an awful lot of implied volatility built into them. The effect of um, time decay or theta is negative. So as each day passes in the value, the, the value of your option or the theta value of your option, will reduce um, as each day goes by. And just remember, in the last two weeks of the life of an option, theta arises at a rapid rate. So as each day ticks by, it's a negative. And that's another reason why we go in the money and try and buy as much real value in an option as possible. So how do you go about picking strikes and time frames for the long call strategy? Well, this really depends on you as an investor. If you're very bullish, use at the money strikes, we don't recommend that. We much prefer to use in the money strikes. And the reason is you're buying less time value. Okay, you're not going to make as much money and your return on investment won't be as big, but your p potential for making profit is greater. Um, with Ford, we went in the money by $4.20. So remember, at the time the share price was trading at, um, at $14.20, we bought the $10 calls and that's in the money by 420 and we actually paid 430 so we only bought 10 cents a time value in that particular option which was a smart play what time frame should you pick go as far out as possible to give yourself as much time for a trade to work out too many people to pick too short a time frame when they're buying calls for the trade to work out so we like to give ourselves as long as possible to give the stock a chance to rise so just comparing the two strategies, let's say, why did we pick the long call strategy versus buying the stock? And the bottom line is it's risk versus reward. We're risking less to make more or less the same amount of profit. So if we were to buy the shares of Ford, we would have been paying out 14.20. For the long call, we only paid out 4.30. Our total investment for 200 shares would have been 2,840 on the long stock, but it was only $860 on the long call. Now, our profit potential, our target price for the shares was $18. That's where we're going to get out of this particular trade. So let's assume that Ford does go to $18. Our profit potential, if we'd have bought the stock, was $760. But on the long call, it's $740. So if you think about it, we're risking less to make more or less the same profit. So it didn't make sense to actually buy the stock. 
Our return on investment, if we're correct, on our target price is 27% for the long stock, but it's 86% for the long call. But there is some drawbacks to using long calls. The first thing is dividends. You don't get paid any dividends, whereas if you had bought the stock, you'd get paid 3.8% in a dividend. And then in terms of time frame limitations, there's none with owning the stock. But as you can see, we have a year and a half for our, our option trade to work out um, with, with Ford. So there's a time constraint when you're using long calls and you need to be aware of that. And that's another reason why we go in the money. Because if you're in the money, you can literally roll out your call options again if it hasn't quite risen as far as you'd like. So just managing a trade. If the share price reaches your target price, sell the call option for a profit. Really important to get yourself into that discipline. The reason is too many people keep holding on and wait and wait for it to keep rising. And then all of a sudden there's a fall in the share price. You will never go broke taking profit. So in our Ford case, the minute Ford hits $18, we're going to sell that call for whatever profit we have. But in a situation where the share price has fallen below your strike price, and this is going to happen to you sometimes, you're not going to get it right all the time. Um, what you do really depends on your outlook for the stock. So if you still believe that the shares are going to rise, do nothing. Just wait for the trade to play itself out. However, if you've changed your view to a new low, lower target price, then sell when you get to that target price, even if it means taking a small loss. Still sell at that target price. And if you no longer like the stock, sell and sell your call options for whatever you can get and take the loss and move on. Really important to do that. Just don't watch the rest of the value in your call option dwindle away. So this is Stephen from Share Navigator. Please recommend our website to your friends. All of our training here is free, and you can also get some of our live trades that we place and share those with your friends. So visit sharenavigator.com. This is Stephen. Thanks and bye for now.